What's up everybody, Drew here. Today we're gonna to talk about photo booth vocabulary. So there are a lot of terms in the photo booth business when we're talking about equipment or anything just related to the business that you may not know what it means, right? So I just wanna go over everything. A lot of this stuff is obvious, but hopefully there's a thing or two you can learn here. So let's just dive right into it. But before we do, as always, make sure to hit subscribe, give this video a like, and then let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you learned anything. So let's get right into it. So when you hear the word photo booth, right? A lot of times people think it's everything. They'll think when you're talking about the photo booth, you're talking about your backdrop. They think you're talking about the prop table. And sometimes they think you're talking about the inflatable thing that goes over it. But the word photo booth really just means it's this. It's the shell with your equipment in it. That is called your photo booth. So that's really, really important to, to keep in mind. But when you hear photo booth shell, it would literally be this right here, right? Our deluxe booth minus the iPad. So that means the shell is everything minus the equipment that goes inside of it. And um, beautiful booth, right? Photobooth101.com, you can get your own. So anyways, let's move forward. Uh, the next term are props. You'll hear this a lot, prop table. That may, basically means it's the table that has your props on it. Whether that is silly glasses, dinosaur hands, you know, prop signs, they're all props. And props are literally just something that you have available for people that are using your photo booth to pick up and use during their photos. Um, you know, we have this one. Okay, I'll, let's talk about this really quick. This is a great prop. <laughs> we got this at five below, but the thing I don't like about these types of props are they get very dirty inside because it is white. A lot of people at these events have makeup on and it's just really unsanitary. So I think the main props that are great to have are prop signs, some glasses, hats, you know, wrestling belts, you can get creative with it, you guys. There's no definition of what can be a prop and what can't. Like, literally, if it's something that someone will pick up and use, that's a prop. So, next thing is backdrop. Let's talk about a backdrop. Well, a backdrop is referring to what is uh, behind the people taking the photos. So, right here, you see we have this backdrop here. That is the stand. So, the backdrop stand isn't the backdrop. The, the stand is what you put the actual backdrop on. So, I know that's a little bit confusing. So a lot of times customers will get the actual backdrop confused with what the template is, right? And uh, let's just go ahead and move on to templates since we're talking about templates. Template would be what you have on your, actually, hold on, let me show you. So the, this would be a template, right? If you take out the three photos that, that we took, everything else would be the template. And the, I like to just say it's what's under the photos um, and you know whether it's a print, whether it's a digital event, templates are usually made and um, don't get that confused with the backdrop. I don't know how they get intertwined, but somehow they do. So let's talk about printers, right? You have to know what printer is a photo booth printer, right? Obviously you can pretty much get away with using any printer. It's not gonna be convenient, right? So let me break that down. So you have inkjet printers, right? Ink-based printers which will print out photos, but they'll use ink. Why that's not ideal for photo booths? Well, one, print time is super, super slow. And another negative is when it prints out, it's usually a little bit wet. It's not like you can grab it right away and hand it to someone. You kind of have to give it like a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds to dry. And the major thing is if you're doing the traditional two by six strips, you're gonna have to cut it. It's not gonna cut it for you. So that's why there are certain printers that are actually made for photo booths, um, like DNP, they make a printer called RX1HS. That's the model of it. That's the one we have. We use it all the time. What I love about it, it's a, um, it's basically not pa it's paper and a ribbon. So instead of ink, it uses a ribbon, and it'll print out either a four by six, your standard, or it'll print out two two by six strips, and then it'll cut it for you. So when I say four by six, right, it's another term. It's basically just the dimensions of the print or of the digital format that you're sending, right? So four by six, then you have two by six, right? And um, when you buy these printers, they're gonna be, you're gonna notice that they're calling the paper and ribbon media. For some reason, that's what it's called, right? It's a little confusing, media, the word. So that, another reason why I love the printers too, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, you guys, it's about 12 seconds to print. And speed with printers is everything, right? Because if you have a printer that takes a minute and a half to print, most people aren't gonna stick around and wait two minutes for their photos to come out. They're probably most likely gonna leave because we have problems with people leaving from our photo booths and it only takes 12 seconds. So I can only imagine that uh, that issue. So let's talk about software. 
all software is, it's the program you are using to run your photo booth, right? So whether it's an iPad booth like this booth here, you know, most of the time we are using Luma booth. Luma booth is an app that we download um, onto the iPad and it's what we use to run the photo booth. So you have um, like for a DSLR booth, right? There's DSLR software. Um, I don't really know too many <laughs> companies names, but there are different softwares and not every software has the same um, functions, right? And the pricing is different and the way you get your events loaded onto your devices are different, right? So it's important to do your research. Not all softwares are the same, um, but if you are using an iPad photo booth, I highly recommend you look into Luma booth. It is the most affordable app, in my opinion, that gives you all of the functions and features that you'll need to grow your business. Luma booth for sure, 100%. Now let's talk about the photo booth attendant. What does that mean? Well, if you're offering prints or any type of photo booth rental service that requires someone to be there while the photo booth is running, that person that represents your company, whether that's you or an employee, is the attendant, meaning they're there to attend to the booth, right? To fix the prop table, to make sure that the printer has paper, it has ribbon. So like I said, you guys, it has media um, to make sure everything is running smoothly. But what I love about the iPad booth, guys, when we do drop offs, there's no attendant. It's the most passive way to run a photo booth business. But that's besides the point. But again, attendant is referring to the person. So that brings us to the word vendor. What is a vendor? Well, venues, right? They have their location. They have um, vendors, different types of vendors. And a vendor is someone providing a service for that event. So a bartender, that's considered a vendor. The uh, cake, the cake company that brings a cake, vendor. The DJ, vendor. Photo booth, vendor. So you'll hear this a lot when they're referring to vendors, they're probably talking about the uh, person that is providing a service. So let's talk about the word deposit, also known as a retainer. This is the amount of money that you'll get from your customer to lock in the date for their rental. Um, there's different ways you can call it, you know, you technically you should call it a retainer because a retainer means that they're putting money down on a service and a deposit means that they're putting money down in the hopes of getting it back, right? So if you put a uh, deposit down for, let's just say an apartment, and when your lease is up, you are expecting that money back, right? So, you know, I highly recommend you call it retainer. Uh, it, talk to your lawyer if, if you're really not sure, don't take my advice, but I'm just saying we refer to it as a retainer, but you'll hear me online calling it a deposit. So another thing you're gonna hear often is CRM, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. And usually that is just basically like a software that you'll use to like automate everything and how you communicate with your customers, right? Um, not something I think that is necessarily needed right, right away when you start. It may not make sense for you to have it if you're just getting maybe like a booking or two a month. You know, you could definitely do it the old school way, you know, writing emails and keeping a track, a log, but a CRM is really good to have once you wanna grow, um, once you wanna automate everything, you know, you can keep all of your conversations and deposit signed and collect money all in one place. So for example, we use HoneyBook. Um, I'm not gonna get into detail about HoneyBook, but Honey, HoneyBook is our CRM. But if you wanna get started with that, I will leave my link to get started in the description. Another term you're gonna hear is venue. Venue is just referring to the place where the event is taking place, which is really important. This is something you're gonna to have to know the address to, because if you don't know where the venue's at, you're not gonna have any idea where to go when it comes to setting up your booth. So you're gonna hear the word contract. Um, it's, it is what it is. It's literally just a contract that you have for your customer to sign. You're gonna also have to sign that too, right? It's an agreement of the terms, basically stating, you know, if anything happens to the booth, the customer is reliable for it. Um, also what should be included that are the hours you guys agreed to have your photo booth running, the price, and all of these other little things that are important should be in your contract. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, but before I sign off, I have to remind you guys that I do have a company where we sell iPad photo booth shells, we sell backdrops, we sell props, we provide sample contracts, booking forms, and a bunch of other assets for anyone looking to get started or if you just wanna add an iPad booth to what you already offer, right? Um, and again, I'm gonna leave that link in the description, and as always, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments if I miss anything. So again, I'll see you soon, take care.